jazz is ultimately about joy and there's nothing more joyful than seeing young people coming together, finding their strength and acting as one. It's so joyful. My soul was once a captain, but now I'm free. I believe in music education, promoting awareness of music, particularly jazz. So I wanted to support Eli as much as I can and you know, offered the studio free of charge. I didn't know about jazz music growing up. I don't want to see it wither. I want to see it flourish. You have to figure out a way to connect people to this music. The jazz drama program began at the Louis Armstrong Middle School. There was a band program, there was an orchestral program, and these programs were established there. But what, there, what lacked was strong jazz exposure. The children there, they knew who Louis Armstrong was to some degree. They knew he played the trumpet, but if you went beyond him and said, well, what about Duke Ellington? They'd say, well, did he play the trumpet too? You know, so it just wasn't all that strong, the, the knowledge of jazz. But now let's get the kids who want to do a show, let's get them exposed to this language. Let's show them how stories can come alive in the language of jazz. Jazz and theater is a magical combination. We eventually realized we needed to write new musicals for young people, and it had to be jazz because it was the Louis Armstrong Middle School. And that's what we started doing in 1998. And it's been an incredible journey from the halls of public school in New York City right here to this amazing world-class studio avatar. When Eli uh, called me and explained to me what he was trying to do with the uh, jazz drama program, um, I was quickly on board. Focus up. Focus up. Focus up. Good morning. Welcome to Avatar. You know, we're really going to bring the best out of our voices, out of our spirit for, for Nora's Ark. All right? All right? All right. All right. All right. Let's take out a little bit. Shake, 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 shake. shake. The program is about jazz and drama and bringing those two things together. I know Mr. Yeaman and I both feel that it can save the world. I know that's like a, you know, a high notion, but these are the ways that change is made in individuals and then to the community. And we're all a community. to trust your gut that what you're doing is right. It's known that the arts increases um, a kid's ability to do math and science, to just be a better student all around, and the arts are the first thing that are cut in schools. The age group for Nora's Ark would be, to be in the show, would be 10 years old to 14 maybe, because um, we have eighth graders in it. Um, seeing the show, Young kids could see this show and just enjoy it as well as adults. These kind of programs inspire kids, not just in these kind of programs, but in learning. Hey. So what you guys are going to do there are basically three parts. And the first part is this. Yeah, you need both your hands. And then the second part is this. You need to do sitting down, but you do it down. And the third part is you just add. Jazz offers this incredible range of emotional expression at a time when children are just becoming aware of the emotional capacity 
that lies within them. So all of a sudden, you know, 12, 13 years old, children are getting this jazz language and say, wow, I can express my feelings of frustration and pain and loss through the blues and find that swing rhythm and that shuffle rhythm and feel some support and feel the support of the community around me singing. So it's an amazing time to introduce kids uh, to this music and to show them this world of expression and make it available to them. Two thousand was the first production of Nora's Ark, and um, you know it's it's based on the biblical tale of Noah's Ark, but Nora is the great hero in the beginning. The show opens with her in her lab coat. She's attending to all these measurements, and she realizes that the clouds are this way and that, and there's this terrible storm that's going to come, and nobody really believes her, but she's so passionate about this and certain about this and she dispatches her daughters to go get various things. One daughter must go get a ship, a cruise ship. Another daughter must go get the animals from the Bronx Zoo. Another daughter must get the raincoats because there's going to be lots of rain. And the, third, the fourth daughter, Fitzy, who's a bit ditzy, is assigned to get the food. So they all run their separate ways and then of course the storm does in fact come and all, but the, the, the ship comes and the the, the animals come and they all get on board and the storm comes and it's absolutely terrible and all humanity is destroyed and then we find ourselves the next day on, on board of the ship with the only survivors from this terrible catastrophe and uh, it seems that Fitzy, who's a bit ditzy, has forgotten the food. She got the chef's hat and pots and pans and everything, uh, but she forgot the food and then there's our big problem. What are they going to eat? How different we could taste it in the air. Catastrophes upon us. We feel it in our blood. It's gonna rain. The poles will melt. did a mini production of Nora's Ark, a nine hours. I got a group of 25 teachers to do kind of a workshop version of it, just to give them a taste of what it's like to put on a jazz musical. And one of those people in the, in the workshop production was a principal and she went back to her school and said, hey, let's do this. So educators tell me, you know, we're getting tired of doing the same old, same old. Some of these musicals are 60 years old, but a lot of things we see don't necessarily have the level of quality of some of the older things. So they're very enthusiastic uh, and open-minded to what we're offering here. Now we're singing like we got no mind. Now we're singing, it don't matter your kind. Take a chance and dance with me. Just limber up your branches on the family tree. I think a lot of children feel like, you know, their freedom is constantly being curtailed. They're told they got to be here, be there, they got to do this, do that, they got to get dressed this certain way. So we give them this story where these animals are, have kind of started to really rejoice in, in their freedom from captivity and, and, and thinking about this idea of freedom. And I think that in itself does definitely have an appeal to young people who are in some way struggling for their own freedom. And, and often feel like they're struggling for their very own survival. Listen to me, cheetah. Breathe deep and take it slow. I know you're feeling down and out, but you have got to let it go. There's blue all around me, but I'm not feeling blue today. My 
my soul was once a captive, but now my freedom is here to stay. Well, they like dressing up as animals. They like chasing after each other. Something about the music, really, is what draws them to the story. And the protests. You know, I think about those blues numbers that the animals sing. I'm nobody's house cat. Each night I bore the cost. I always knew this day would come when I would find what I had lost. There's blue all around me, but I'm not feeling blue today. I'm walking tall now, baby, because my freedom is here to stay. This blood has been a blessing because freedom is here to stay, to stay. The music of today, the kids are so much into this hip hop and rap. And it's so nice. I mean, I am a parent from back in the days where you heard your classicals, you heard your jazz and your R&Bs, and, they, and it's, sort of like, it's sort of like taking a back seat. So sort of now incorporating that into a fun play, hands-on kind of thing. I find that the kids, they, it's not, oh, I'm to listen to jazz, oh no. Now that they're being a part of it and having their sections and seeing how beautiful it is, you know, you sort of like see this, the, the brightness in their eyes and say, wow, this is really cool. Whereas before, when they just heard it on the radio, oh, another jazz song. But now that they're being a part of it, it's like you, all of a sudden now you throw on jazz. It's like, oh, I like that. Oh, I need to try to sing that. And you, you sort of like, it's sort of like lift, for lack of a better word, the dead, you know, because it was, they didn't want to hear that kind of music before. So sort of, it's a fun way of introducing the music back to them again. We all got eyes, though they're not the same. We all got skin, so we can feel the rain. All got hearts, and I can guarantee we're dancing and we're swinging on the family tree. Okay, we're a little ahead of the beat. Yeah. <coughs> a little ahead of the beat. Fella crawled out of the deep blue sea. I'm so glad to be here, but where's my family? We have great respect for jazz musicians and the musicianship that they have and it's uh, actually a real joy recording jazz musicians and artists here at Avatar Studios. Our rooms have great acoustics and of course the rooms are uh, fairly large so we can handle a trio all the way up to a, a big band and we've recorded people like Herbie Hancock, um, Brad Meldow, John Schofield, Joe Lovano and countless other jazz artists here so we have a great affinity for jazz and you know we like to do what we can to support the, uh, the genre. There are wonderful jazz musicians throughout this country and our hope is that eventually uh, communities who want to do these shows will then reach out to their local jazz musicians and hire them to play the show and perform it live. We will have this production CD available to schools who want to perform with the recorded tracks. We'll also have these wonderful singers from the Brooklyn Youth Chorus as a model for how young singers can sound. It's going to be a great teaching tool for kids to listen to those chorus singers and, and, and learn their parts from listening two, to them. One, two. When the land emerges, we will lead the way. A balance must be made each and every day. Life is full of choices, some is hard as stone. It often helps to know you're not alone. The way that we're approaching the, the project is to uh, kind of think of it the way we would do a, uh, like a Broadway show recording. And so the idea was to make it as simple as we could. So we had one full day with the background band. And then uh, now we started with the large ensemble. We started with uh, all the background singers, or all the choir. And then we've kind of scaled it down to the point where we'll finish the day by using the, the soloists and, the, um, and the, the background singers for the soloists. So the idea was to kind of take it very logically in scheduling. Because, you know, when you have a, a session like this, scheduling is probably the most important thing because you don't want to have 40 people waiting around for you. So you're trying to get the maximum 
use of everybody's time, uh, both musically and technically. Louis Armstrong and Barry Harris being our guardian angels of this show, we knew that blues and swing had to be a big part of, of this show's jazz language. And uh, most of the kids get a chance to sing the blues. Many of them have solos, and so they really get to taste the nectar of what that genre is about. And the temperature of mud It's gonna rain The poles will melt The earth is gonna flood We learned something new about jazz. Jazz is such a complex and large genre. There's swing and there's scatting and then there's the blues. And all of it encompasses a different emotion. And by doing this, we get to see all those different things. And, and Nora is a great character to play because she has so many different emotions. She wants to take care of her family and she also wants to be conscious of the real world, like the science of it. The blues is the roots and everything else is the fruits. Swing is so basic to the jazz language um, and it's presented in a, in a couple different ways in this show. So there's a lot of different ways that kind of that rhythm can infect the young people and it does, and just seeing the choir just now here in the studio dancing and everything, it, it, it really affirmed for me how that, that swing rhythm will continue to infect uh, young people and people of all ages for generations to come, so long as they have access to it and that they can hear it. They told me to be happy, to put away my rage, you see? Now you're going to be able to hear the hi-hat is going to be, it's this little snap, one, snap, snap, it's on two and four, okay? All right, let's try it again. The night when I was taken, they threw me in a cage. They told me to be happy, to put away my rage. Like, the instruments are all in the headphones, and so you have to find a balance between trying to hear the people around you and trying to hear the instruments, and it's very different than singing with a live band. Jazz is about newness. Jazz is about the moment. Jazz is about uh, friendship and working together with other people. And these are the lessons that we're trying to learn when we're young people and hopefully that we can maintain in our adult years. In my Italian household we always listen to Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin and we have like live at Chicago in our car playing all the time. So that was like I grew up listening to that sort of beat. I'm amazed by the power of this collaboration of young people and jazz music. To me, it is the most natural thing in the world. And I am very moved by the emotional power um, that these young people bring to our music. It's gonna rain. My dad's like a big jazz fan, so he's always sometimes playing jazz music around my house. So, I mean, I've never sung it before this, but it's always kind of been around me. I guess when I think about music, I think about it in a way as a spiritual thing. I mean, I think you might have even said it that it's, you know, it's taking breath and putting it through and creating a sound. And there's nothing more holy than that. And so doing that experience together, it's, it's like our, it's our religion, I guess. I realized how much fun jazz is. 
it's so much fun. Like it makes you want to get up and dance and do something. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like an electricity. To see them dancing, to see them singing, to see them telling a story, it's so basic. And yet, I think it's really the firmament of humanity. And I hope for generations to come, people find the joy of jazz and make it part of their lives because I know it makes a better life.